Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is the second session of the entire conference. <laughs> and I am I'm super excited to have everybody here, especially my speaker here. And uh, you you were working all night, right? So thank yes, you for night. the dedication, <laughs> the dedication and everything. I appreciate it more than you know. And uh, this is this is going to be excellent. I'm excited for this. So without further ado, he is, here is Sabrina Henry, and she is presenting on I'm a Dispatcher. Now what? Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Ricardo. Good morning, everybody. Like Ricardo said, I just got done working a 12-hour shift, so I just stayed at work so I can give this presentation because um, I, I have about a 45-minute drive back home, so I would not have made it. So... Um, just a little background about myself. I've been in dispatch for 15 years. I worked at a previous agency for two or 10 years as a supervisor. I took about a year off um, and I came back. My current place of employment here at Hutchison, Reno County in Kansas, I have been here for five years. I'm currently a supervisor and I work the night shift. Um, I'm also a training officer, um, do quality assurance. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, just like everybody else, we're short staffed and we've got a bunch of new hires though. So I'm super excited with that. So with that being said, um, we're just going to get started here this morning. So I'm a dispatcher. Now what? We went through the dispatching process. We got hired. We went through the training, the craziness that comes along with the training finally got released. We're on our own. So now what do we do? What do I do with everything that I've learned and all the knowledge? Um, so we're going to kind of talk about that this, this morning. Um, we're going to talk about the leadership side of it. So some people may have been in here for one day. Some of us may be 10, 15, 20 years, but there's always a leadership side to this whether you're a one day -er or somebody that's been here 15 years, we want to develop ourselves, develop our employees as leaders um, in the dispatch center. So we want to empower those people, inspire them, share the vision that we have and they have and lead for change. So we're going to kind of talk about some aspects of leadership today. So what or who are leaders? Who could be the leaders in our dispatch center? We have supervisors, directors, managers. We have frontline dispatchers. Any of them can be leaders, okay? Any of them. We kind of sometimes forget those frontline dispatchers sometimes could possibly be our best leaders um, out there. Supervisors, managers, directors, we get really busy with stuff. Sometimes we forget to lead. Some of those dispatchers that are in the front line could be the ones that empower the rest of the team to take on stuff. So just some quick definitions. A supervisor, obviously, a person that supervises activities and a manager who's responsible for controlling or administrating part of the company or of our organization and a director who's in, in charge. But that leader and that leadership um, ability is that individual or a group that can influence or guide others in our organization. And that's what we want to key in, key in on today. So. so we're going to talk about some leadership styles. Um, when I was putting this presentation together and looking at different leadership styles, some have four different leadership styles. I found stuff that had 12 leadership styles. I implore you to go out and look and do some research and look at all the different leadership styles out there and find something that maybe will fit you. Maybe there's a couple of different things. Um, I just got done reading a book and it's talking about leadership and leadership gaps. And it was really interesting because the leadership styles that they talk about are not the normal leadership styles that we see that are out there. So it was really interesting reading the book and finding, you know, them putting a different spin on stuff. So the first leadership style we're going to talk about is bureaucratic leadership. Basically, this you follow the rules precisely that are written. Um, the employees have a set list of responsibilities 
And with that, there's very little collaboration or creativity within the group. Sometimes that's what we need, depending on the situation and the person. So we might use this style. Um, you might fit into this um, if you're very detail oriented or tasked with stuff. You follow the rules you want, you value the rules and the structure within it, and you have great work ethic. Um, and you're very committed to your organization. And it causes you to be kind of self-disciplined too, because you're going to follow those lists and those rules. So some of the benefits with this, you follow the strict rules and regulations. You know, you know policies, procedures, you're going to follow those. And each person within the organization has a defined role with that leads and it's efficient with that. Everybody knows their role and their place. And it kind of helps separate the work and the friendship relationships. Not that we don't want to be friends with people, but sometimes we have to separate that work and that friendship when it comes to, you know, 911 or whatever business with them we might be into. So, but some of the challenges that come with that, I and mean, it does not prompt creativity. I've noticed my team that I have and that I get to work with, they are very creative. And so this is not the, the leadership style that works for us here in the dispatch center because we don't want to squish their creativity. The other thing is it's slow to change. Um, it's not really a thriving environment. Um, some people need that bigger dynamic than what this has. So coaching. So with coaching, it's someone who can quickly recognize the team's strengths, their weaknesses, helps them to motivate and those individuals to improve. Um, there's a lot of coaching that goes on in the dispatch center, um, whether it be from just a frontline dispatcher to the CTOs, to the supervisors. Um, some of my greatest coaching um, is coming from my partner that I have on nights. I get busy doing stuff because I have supervisor um, stuff to do. She's kind of there to back me up. She helps coach and helps lead um, the other employees and the training that I currently have too. So sometimes I miss something and she's there to back me up um, with that. So with the coaching um, style, you know, if you're supportive and you can offer guidance instead of being commanding, and you value learning as a way to grow, this is great leadership style for you. Um, and it helps balance the, the knowledge and helps others find themselves. And you, you have to kind of be self-aware of yourself though. You want to kind of know what your weaknesses and your strengths are with this. Um, some of the benefits, um, positive in nature, okay? You help develop new skills, rethinking stuff, and empower the other dispatchers in your center with this. And it helps revisit the organization's objectives and you gain some confidence and helps with the workplace culture. And you see value in mentors. Um, everybody probably needs to have a mentor, even as a supervisor or a director or a manager or a training officer. You still kind of want to have a mentor. We're still learning. I'm, I've been here 15 years, five years at this department, and there's still things that I'm still learning. And I've had some really great mentors in the workplace and outside the workplace. Um, some challenges. Coaching leadership style can be kind of time consuming because you're working with the individual um, and it does take a lot of effort sometimes. And it takes a lot of time to get them on track or help them with their questions. Um, so it takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the employee. So lazy, fair, or hands-on, it's called more kind of hands-on. You focus uh, mostly on delegating many tasks to your team members and you provide little to no supervision. Um, this is great when you have somebody that is really wanting to step up um, and do more stuff. Um, we have a couple of our dispatchers that are 
getting ready to move up into CTO positions. And so we start delegating them stuff to do. Um, and we're there if they have questions, but we kind of let them be to a certain extent and just are there to guide them if they have questions. So this works really good. Um, if you can effectively delegate tasks, um, sometimes I'm really bad about this. I wanna do everything myself and then I start getting overwhelmed and I need to learn to let go and trust my um, team that they can take care of some stuff. Um, believe in freedom of choice. So you kind of give them a task to do and say, get it done, but you don't tell them exactly how to do it. And this is their chance to choose how to do it. If there's no set time frame or no set structure that really needs to be done. Um, it also provides sufficient resources and tools. If, if you can give them the resources and tools or they have it, this is great um, for them to, to learn to have this type of uh, leadership style. It offers constructive criticism. We're there to help them if they kind of bobble a little. Um, we're there to kind of guide them and let them know, okay, this didn't go great. Let's look at maybe doing it this way the next time. Um, and it fosters leadership within the team. So the benefits of this, it encourages account accountability. Um, we're giving them a task. We're not necessarily standing over watching them. Um, they're accountable for what that task is and bringing it to the table. It also lets them have some creativity and a more of a relaxed work environment, um, which is great because it can lead to higher employee retention rates. And we all know right now across the nation, we can use those higher employee retention rates. Some of the challenges with this, this is not the best thing, leadership style um, for maybe those new employees. New, new employees really do need um, some of the guidance and hands-on support at the beginning. Once they start growing, then they can start working into this type of leadership style. And we can use this leadership style on them. Um, it can lead to the lack of structure because there's no supervision per se, or it's very lax supervision. So maybe it can kind of get a little confusing with the roles that people are doing or the tasks that they're doing. Um, and some employees, when we back off sometimes and give them more freedom, actually they did, it kind of creates some anxiety with them. And um, sometimes they don't feel like they're being properly supported. And so the tasks that you give them when they don't feel supported may not get done. So we still need some supervision with this type of leadership style. Democratic or participative leadership. Basically, we're asking for input and we consider the feedback from the team members before making decisions. Um, this is great because it helps foster higher levels of employee, employee engagement and more satisfaction in the workplace. So, you know, if you have that chance to get the, the feedback from your employees and it's something that you can do, I would highly suggest to do that. Um, we have a training team, a training committee. Um, we all put our input in. I also go back to my team of dispatchers and say, hey, you know, we're looking at this. What do you think? You guys just went through the training process. Do you think this will work or not? Pull them in. They're, they're the best ones to know how the training's going. They just went through it. So if you want to be a democratic leader, this is works for you great if you um, value those group discussions. You want to have discussions with your team and let them be part of the process. Promotes um, sharing within the workplace and allows them to bring the ideas to the table. Um, pretty flexible. Um, and if you're a good mediator, uh, this is a great leadership style um, for you. Some of the benefits, um, 
you can feel empowered, you're valued and you're unified. Um, you know, letting your dispatchers start learning this type of leadership style and helping make decisions and um, fostering new ideas, it's great. And it's gonna boost morale within the dispatch center. Um, it also requires less marginal oversight um, from maybe the, the director or the manager. Um, they may know, oh, the supervisors are taking care of this. They're, you know, coaching or leading the team and they're all making um, ideas, bringing ideas and stuff into the table. Some of the challenges, however, with this can be, it can maybe get kind of costly or be ineffective um, if it takes a long time um, for big group discussions or to get ideas back from the team. And it depends on how big your team is. Currently right now in our dispatch center, I think we're up to 15 dispatchers. So for us to send something out and say, hey, we have an idea, it doesn't really take us that long. But you know, if you're in an organization where you have 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 dispatchers, it may not necessarily work. So um, and it also can add to some social pressure um, to members because they don't always like to share ideas in a group setting. Um, to can kind of combat that, figure out how they best would like it to share their ideas, whether it be by email, um, a text, a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a one-on-one -on -one meeting and getting ideas from these people. Um, they're still part of the group. They're still being part of the creative um, team to try and figure out what works and what doesn't work um, within your center. Another type of leadership style is transformational. It's kind of similar to the coaching style, um, but there's clear communication, goal setting um, with the employee, and it helps to motivate the employees. Um, each employee has individual goals, and it helps to kind of drive the commitment to the organization and the objectives of it. <coughs> so, to be the transformational um, leader, you know, if you have mutual respect with your team um, and they respect you back and you respect their ideas, this would be great. And um, you provide encouragement. Um, we've, we're starting to open up more specialty stuff for our dispatchers, like um, training officers, um, tactical dispatching. Uh, so give them the, the chance to maybe branch out and see how that is. Um, encourage them to go out and try different things with this. Um, inspire them to achieve their goals. Ask what they can, what you can do to help them reach the goal that they have. Um, place value on the intellectual challenging of your team. Um, don't make things easy for them. Challenge them. Um, give them ideas and say, you know, we want to do this. What can you come up with? What can you show us um, with this? Be, be creative. Um, and then just ha also have a good understanding of your organizational needs as well. Um, you know, you may need to do this. You know, you have this project or this objective that your manager or director is giving you um, as a team or as a supervisor. You know what, what needs to be done. Share it with your team you know, encourage them to come up with ideas. So the benefits to this is, um, there's a lot of personal connection with your team. Um, you start talking amongst yourselves, you, you start coming up with ideas with it, it boosts morale and tension, retention, um, and you value the ethics of your organization and team, and you're being very goal oriented. You're you're allowing them to try and reach the next step, the next goal that they have within your organization. Um, this, the bad side or the challenge to this is, um, sometimes you look at the individual and you're helping the individual so much um, that some of the team and organizational wins kind of may go unnoticed. And um, you can look over some of those, those details. So do keep that in mind 
if this is the kind of leader that you want to be or you want to help coach somebody to be this type of leader, we're working with the individual, but don't forget about the team. We want to make sure that the team gets recognized, the organization gets recognized as well when we look at those. So like I said, there's these are just a couple of leadership styles. Like I would encourage you to go out and look on the internet, look in books, see all the different kinds of um, leadership styles that there are and pick a couple that might be right for you or might be right for your employees. Like I said, the book that I just read, these are pretty common ones that you see. And the, the book that I read was like way different. Um, they're talking about being the rebel and you're like a rebel as a, a leader. But once you start reading what a rebel is based on this book, it gives you a really good idea. And I'd be more than glad to share um, the book or a couple of different books that I've been reading on leadership um, with the group or people. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about some strategies and habits of growing into a leader. Everybody's still learning. I am by far an expert on leadership. I'm still learning things every day. Um, but the more intentional, as this says, that you're about your leadership growth, the greater your potential of becoming the leader you're capable of being and never stop learning. No matter where you are within an organization, you probably should always keep learning. It makes you a better leader, makes you a better person. So we're just gonna kind of look at some strategies um, today. So um, as we grow as a leader, develop a repertoire of skills. Um, grow your leadership, um, keep updating it, expanding your skills and knowledge. Um, an example, I am now helping with our pre-alert system for fire and EMS. Um, I know a little about it, but this is a different realm than I've ever been in before. So I have a lot of learning um, when it comes to this so that we can get a system that works well for our county and our organization. That's a new skill. Um, if you have leaders that want, or dispatchers that wanna grow and maybe be training officers, help them with the skill set that they need. Give them a list of things that they need to work on, uh, maybe to become that training officer, to become that um, ERT call out dispatcher that um, you may have, or whatever specialty teams that you may have within your organization. Learn through your experiences. We all have experiences, whether they're good or bad. Learn from them. Um, all the experiences are not all that great sometimes. And some of the most difficult challenges present an opportunity to engage in that experience. You learn those lessons. Um, sometimes we fumble and we step wrong and we have to learn how to bounce back from that. But there's always lessons within that, okay? And if things don't go your way, figure out how you can do it better the next time. Um, or what went wrong, what avenues do I need to take maybe to change with that? Challenge your comfort zone. This has been a big challenge for me. Um, I have some of my friends in here that I bounce ideas off of sometimes. And for me to present in front of a group of people, I have been challenging my comfort zone. I've been able to do a couple of virtual classes, um, doing this kind of on a big national level. And Ricardo sent me a, a lovely thing in the uh, Discord that we're in to the whole group saying, "Don't keep, no pressure, but we have people from all over the world. And I replied back, thanks, no pressure. Got it, great. Um, but I've got out of my comfort zone a little. Um, I was um, fortunate enough to go to Nebraska not too long ago to the Nina Apco conference up there. And I got to present up there. Um, it was awesome. I got to meet a lot of new people and it pushed me to drive myself a little harder um, to do some of this training. So focus on the future by being present in today. 
Um, we always look in the future, but how do we get to that future? Be present in today, know what steps and goals you might need to take to get there. And um, if you take take too much time to focus on the um, future, you, you're gonna miss stuff that's gonna help you grow into that leader. Be mindful, stay within the present, set your goals, set your, um, set your steps. And they may be baby steps, but set your steps and it'll help you grow into um, a better leader. You're gonna start reaching your goals as you go on. Set the bar high, whether it's for yourself or your team, set it high. Always keep raising the bar. Um, if you've learned something and you're very good at it, go to the next step, figure out something else. Um, this year I've set the bar kind of high for myself. Um, I'm currently in the RPL program. So that's a new high for, you know, high bar for me to set. Um, so we'll, we're gonna see how that goes. I've gave myself a pretty big challenge with that. I'm, we're setting goals for our dispatchers here. We're putting out a thing. What specialty areas do you wanna work in? What are the goals that you have? We don't wanna leave them behind just because we're improving ourselves as supervisors and leaders. We still want to foster those dispatchers and we want them to become leaders. They're gonna be the next leaders in our department. We want them to set high goals as well. Um, look within yourself. Um, to lead, um, we have to learn to lead from within. Look at your internal qualities. What qual good qualities and bad qualities do I have? What things work well? What things maybe do I need to work on myself in order to lead that group? When you look at that, that's gonna help with it. Um, and I, I tell my group, you know what? I really suck at this sometimes and I'm sorry. Sometimes I get into a funk and I don't mean to. And when I do that, just tell me that I do that because sometimes I don't know. Um, and that's something I still have to work on a little is I get into a funky mood and I don't realize it, but my team will say, Hey, you're being kind of mean today or. You just act like you're really grumpy. Can you do something to, you know, get yourself out of that? I've put it on them to tell me when I'm being like that because I don't always know myself. Keep asking questions. None of us have all the answers. You need to keep asking questions. Ask somebody, okay? Um, hold on one second for me. Sorry, I kind of have a, a sore throat today. Keep asking questions. Because when you stop asking questions, you stop learning. You're not going to grow. Um, I ask my assistant director, who is currently our interim director, questions all the time. She probably gets tired of hearing from me as many questions that I ask her. I ask people outside of work. I'm going to pick on Roxy because I know she's in here. Um, I've sent Roxy emails about stuff. Um, I've sent Halcyon emails about stuff. I ask questions and it's just not from within the dispatch, my own dispatch center or my own organization. Um, let your dispatchers ask you questions. Let them learn. Don't, don't shut them down. Let them ask those questions. It's gonna foster ideas from them. Leverage your weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. Get acquainted with your own weaknesses. And let me tell you, that's not always easy. We don't want to seem weak. Um, we don't wanna be weak sometimes around our dispatchers. But if you know your own weaknesses, you can start leveraging them. You can learn from them and you put yourself in a position to grow. Um, I kind of had a meltdown <laughs> this weekend a little, and some people that follow me on Facebook, and I know some of them are in here probably said, um, had saw this. I saw something and it just hit me wrong. And my self-confidence just went out the door this weekend for whatever reason. Um, it was just a weakness that I had. Um, they all kind of rallied around me and 
sent me messages or whatever. Sometimes I see stuff and it puts me in that funk. I know that's a weakness and I need to figure out how to get out of it. Don't be afraid of your weaknesses. Learn from them and grow from them. Embrace failure. This kind of goes back to the uh, other one that we talked about earlier. We're going we are going to stumble. Um but what helps us is how we recover from that. If we just crawl into a hole and do nothing about it after we fail, we're not going to grow as leaders. Um it also doesn't show our team the quality of a leader either. And we want to ha have them embrace that leadership. We want to learn, have them learn from us. Um, learn the lesson, figure out what happened, um, and grow from that. But don't, don't go bury yourself in the sand. Don't go hide in your hole. Embrace it, learn from it, and grow from it. The other thing is to work with a coach. Um, it doesn't even have to be somebody within your department that can be your coach. It can be externally, you have support. And they just help, they kind of listen to you, guide you, keep you grounded, okay? And they can kind of help you look at your um, goals, the purpose that you have, what you want to do. Um, we actually have um, kind of a leadership um, person that we're, he's external from our department. But the supervisors within the department um, have been going and working with him for almost two years now. Well, I have and our assistant director has. The current other supervisor, she's been in it about a year. He doesn't hold back with us. He, I've learned a lot from him, but he's external from our department. Um, I also have coaches within the department. Um, and it may not be within dispatch either. We fall under the police department um, here in our county. There's people from the administration on the patrol side that are great leaders to us. And so find a coach, find somebody that can help you, whether it's internal or external. Like I said earlier, lead from within and grow yourself and show your team that you're growing too, that you're learning lessons. Um, as we, as leaders, if we continue to grow, then we are gonna grow those leaders that are behind us um, and help them be leaders in the future. The other thing is to learn to follow. It's hard for some people to let go and, and not have control of something. Um, sometimes we don't have to be those leaders. Somebody else can lead. If somebody else has a great idea and they want to take the reins and work on it, we don't have to be the one that's up front leading. Let somebody else lead. Let them take control, plan stuff, rally the troops, okay? Learn to yield some control. And, and it's going to help with morale too because now they're seeing that you are comfortable with them. They're getting the experience. And that's gonna just empower them to be better leaders within your department. Inspire others, okay? Encourage them, guide them, motivate them in whatever way you can, okay? The people that we have maybe behind us as supervisors, the directors, the managers, those people that work, um, they are going to be the next leaders in that department that you work for. We want to inspire them to grow and be great and take my job when I'm ready to leave. Um, we went through a stint here where our leadership kind of bobbled. We had a lot of changes. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't have great guidance um, necessarily. Everybody didn't really know their place. And we weren't really growing leaders um, per se. We want to grow those leaders. We want to encourage them. We want to listen to them, and be sympathetic with them and empower your teams, delegate tasks. 
it's kind of like giving up your power just a little, like I said earlier, but delegate those tasks. Not everyone's good or great at everything. Find out what your teams want, what that person wants, what they're interested in. Make them great in that area and help them grow in that area. Teach and coach others. So when you learn something, don't keep it to yourself. Teach and coach it. And keeping it to yourself doesn't do anybody any good. One, you're not going to grow because you're not teaching it. And your team's not going to grow. Um, the one big thing that this learning coach that we have, when I read a book um, and he talks about it with me, the next time we come back around, I have to teach him something from that book. He also encourages me to take a portion of that book, whatever I'm reading or doing, and take it back to my team and teach my team. So whatever you're learning about, coach it, teach it, teach others. It empowers you, and they learn from it, and they start growing. Be that listener for your team. Um, listen to suggestions, ideas, feedback from your other team members. Make, let them have your ear. They may have some great ideas. We don't want to shut them down. We want them to grow and we're in thought, you know, we're improving them. We, like I said, we want them to be the leaders. Um, are all, all the ideas that they bring to the table not great? There's some that's not. But if we still take the time to listen to them and let them make suggestions, they're not going to be afraid to come to us with ideas. And it keeps the creative juices flowing for them. All right. Any questions up to this point? I'll be more than glad to answer. Like I said, I don't know everything about leadership. I'm still learning. Okay. So, but this is just some of the stuff that I've kind of had takeaways from. All right. So we're learning, we're becoming leaders, we're doing things to empower ourselves, to grow ourselves. Now, what do we do with it? How do we document our growth? And this, as this little side says, team, it's all about the team. Um, we may be growing ourselves individually, but we're also growing our teams. So together, everyone achieves more. If we foster that, that is a great thing for everybody. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so how do you document your growth? There are several ways, and each department probably has their own ways of documenting training or classes that you've taken. These are just kind of some of the things that we do within our department that I was going to bring to the table for you guys. So we have, it's called a personal leadership development book. I've been able to share it with several people. Um, I did it at the Kansas APCO conference and I had several people reach out to me um, with it. So basically this leadership book, we had a committee that came together and put this together um, and they brought a bunch of different ideas to the table um, with it. So everybody within the department, um, within the whole Hutchison Police Department has access to this book. It's on it's on our server. So there's different areas within the book. Um, they talk about mission statements, core values, our community engagements. Our chief is very much into going out into the community and doing stuff. We want to document that. That helps us grow as a leader. He's showing that we're stepping up um, with it. Talks about different personality traits, um, leadership supervision, mentoring your goals that you have. Um, there's a place for us to put our books and podca um, podcasts that we may listen to or read. Um, ideas or things that we do out outside, maybe with other agencies. Um, we take this into consideration. Our off-duty life. What do we do to relax? What do we do to have fun? And then like our career highlights. So I have a couple pages in here that I pulled um, with this. Um, I don't know how well you can see it um, on the PowerPoint, but like training. And basically 
basically we just go in there and put, you know, what training we took, where it occurred at, and then we look at what lessons we learned, things that we took away from it, how we're going to apply that training, um, how that training that we had could help improve our department, and how we're going to apply it. And we do this for um, every training that we go to. Now, I, I will say with this book, you don't have to do it. It's optional. Um, but this helps grow our leaders. And the chief does actually when it comes to promotion time and whatnot, he looks at this book if we have it. Um, so it just helps see that we want to be the leaders. We want to step up. We want to grow our organization. And we want to be somebody that fosters this idea that we have. If there's a section on goals, what goals do you have? We use the SMART system. So is it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely? Um, we have short-term goals. We can have long-term goals. If you put your goals in writing, it's going to help you. It's going to help you grow as a leader. It's going to help you obtain those goals. I would highly suggest, you know, those frontline dispatchers or you frontline dispatchers that are out there, set your short-term goals. Know what you want to do. You may have to make them short-term little increment goals to get to the, to the big goal, but put something together like this, okay? Leadership styles, it has a section on leadership styles, just talks about what type of leadership styles, their personalities, what fits best for us. It also talks about um, the leadership styles that have been an ineffective for us. So, and how we're going to apply those leadership styles. In mentoring, it has a section on mentoring. Um, and it talks about having mentors during your life, not just at work. What mentors have you had growing up in other jobs? You, you may have had some great mentors before you ever became a dispatcher that possibly could have made you a great dispatcher. Um, so it's just a chance for us to put this stuff in writing, think about it, experience it, and maybe think about how we want to mentor others as we're going through. And then this section is just another way of how we just kind of um, put our training in. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It might be a little hard to, to, uh, to uh, see, but every training that they do, no matter how little, they put it in there. They attach their certifi uh, certifications that they get. We do like police legal science. They put it in there, IAED. They just put it in an Excel spreadsheet so they can keep track of it. Um, our agency requires 24 hours of continuing education a year. I'm telling you, the dispatchers far exceed the 24 hours that they need. This is just another look. They kind of can change their colors as, as they want with this. Mine's pretty, I think this is mine. It's pretty mundane, just a little. There's not a lot going on with it, but it gives them some freedom to be, you know, brighten their day or do do um, the colors that they want with this. I would suggest to find a way to document your training, your growth, be creative with it. Um, you never know what you're going to come up with. One of your dispatchers, you yourselves may have this great idea how to document your growth for your department and, and spread it throughout the rest of the department. All right, is there any questions? That's my presentation. Um, like I said, I hope you guys got something from it. I'm still learning. I, like I said, I'm not an expert on this by far, um, but these are just some tips, strategies, suggestions of helping your team, helping yourself grow. So, and I'm more than welcome. That leadership book that we have, um, it's in kind of a word document type thing. I, if anybody wants it, they can for sure email me and I'll be glad to send you copies of it so that you would have it to, to look at. Um, I'm, 
you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can send it to you and you can come up with your own ideas or change it around as well. All right, Ricardo, you can come back in. I'm done. All right. Excellent, excellent work. Some awesome information there. And also for, for all of you who are here right now, I put the link at the very top, but let me uh, let me put it in here again because over in the uh, the Discord uh, server, Sabrina's over there as well as uh, the rest of the speakers, and we're able to you know communicate further uh, there. So um, I ended up changing something before you had to go to the rules and click on this check mark. Well, not everybody reads all of that stuff so i took off that part because i mean the only reason i had it on there so that people uh can say yes to the to the rules and not be trolls but i'm going to trust that everyone will just be awesome we're not rule breakers <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i took that part out so now all you have to do is um, join the server. You become a member right away. There's channels on the left. There's a, a specific Dare to Be Great channel there where we are talking and everything. And, uh, you know, maybe, um, uh, Sabrina, you'll be able to, to uh, upload that there or send it to me and I can upload it there as well. But okay. either way, thank you so much for, for the dedication and, and coming on after working all freaking night and then doing this amazing presentation and getting this information out there. I mean, just yeah, looking in the comments, they loved it. I have about a 45 minute drive home, so I'm going to crash when I get home. So, oh man. <laughs> uh, well, be safe. Be safe going home. Roll the windows down, throw on some music right. or, or whichever. And uh, this is, again, this is excellent. So, it looks like people are, um, you know, ever, the, just the comments were great. They're looking for your email address, it looks like. You know, maybe I'll, we can throw that I'll in Discord as well. I'll put my email address in here real quick, like, for you guys. And you're awesome. probably, your best bet is to email me. Um, I'll get it. It might take me a couple of days, but I'm, I for sure will get back to you, so. Perfect. All right. Let's see. Um... Oh, I don't know. Gary says that I have a slight delay. I'm not sure, but either way, thank you all. I'm gonna bring all of you to the uh, to the next session uh, here in just a moment. But again, thank you so so much, uh, Sabrina, and thank you. Uh, this has been excellent. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the conference. All righty, we'll see you in the next one, everyone.